yes hi guys uh, today i'm taking differential calculus the basic object of this is what is basic object of differential calculus for the students and secondly i'll talk about the what is definition of definition of differential calculus and thirdly what are the quantities which are discussed in uh, in differential calculus and what are the basic object of the students which are studying differential calculus and which is the okay, what is the branch of this mathematics in which we study the differential calculus Okay, so the basic object of so what is the definition of differential calculus? In differential calculus or integral calculus, one has to study, or this is the that branch of mathematics in which we study about the changes in quantities which are functionally related, or functionally related quantities are being discussed. All right, the changes in the quantity which are functionally related. Say the first definition, or you may say that in differential calculus or integral calculus, we study about. And what are the changes in quantity which are functionally related, right? This is the basic definition. Then the, what is the object of this different purpose? The basic object of different purpose is to find out or to investigate the way in which one quantity varies with respect to other, right? When the other quantity is made to vary. Right, so I have to define that what is the definition of this. So in calculus, in calculus, one has to study. One has to study the change or the changes in quantities. Changes in quantities which are functionally related, right? Which are functionally related. Functionally, which are functionally related quantities which are related functionally or functionally related quantities functionally which are functionally related to each other which are functionally related to each other this is the basic definition in differential calculus or integral calculus so the calculus is that branch of mathematics in which we study about the changes in quantities which are functionally related. Right? This is how the basic definition. What the object of this? The basic object. The basic object of studying differential calculus is to find out the way or to investigate the way. To investigate the way in which in which one quantity varies with respect to other. In which one quantity varies with respect to other. With respect to other. With respect to the other. The other. When the letter has to the letter is made to vary. The letter is made to vary. For example, let me take oh, for instance, let me take example. If y equal to x cube plus x square plus two x plus three, this is a okay uh one function of y is dependent variable here. We talk about what is the dependent variable. Dependent variable. Now y is equal to x cube plus x square plus two x plus three. If I change, right? So we have to find out y. How y changes when x is being changed? When x is made to change, and how y is changing? That we have to study. This is the basic object of the differential calculus. Right? So. For example, in this case, if we put value of x, then y will similarly change, or for different values of x, y will also change. So this is the basic object of differential calculus. Now, in differential calculus, we study the quantities and functions, how functions or how quantities are related to each other functional that are told you in definition of this different calculus or calculus. So <clears throat> now we have to talk about what are the quantities, right? Or which quantities are being discussed here? The quantities are mostly real numbers which are being which are discussed in different calculus. Right. So real numbers, 
I zato li jedna ima sredstvo? Tako, ovo tu je jedna mrša. To, da kontri i čas mostli realna mrša, or pritiska se bodo realna mrša. So, realna mrša ar privatni tudi tudi pač mostli, realna mrša ar. Realna mrša ar privatni tudi tudi pač. Let me talk about it like this. First stage, rational mrša and second, irrational mrša. First rational mrša, what are the rational mrša? Rational mrša. And second is the rational bus. Right? So, rational bus and irrational bus. Rational bus and irrational bus. Now, what are the rational bus? What are the irrational bus? Okay, so, uh, as I told you that R, the real, real numbers are noted by R. So R is the set of all the rational numbers. Rational numbers plus irrational numbers. Plus irrational numbers. Plus irrational numbers. Now, the basic <coughs> the illustration of real numbers is uh, clearly explained in terms of decimals. If I explain these numbers in decimal forms, then the real numbers are easily defined or easily explained. Right. So, what are the rational numbers? Let me define first. Rational numbers are those numbers which, which if I define them decimally, then those decimals which are terminal or which are terminated, sorry, which are terminated, or if non terminated, then they are recurring. So, recurring decimals, if they are non terminating, then they must be recurring. And so, they are real numbers, right? And what are the, sorry, uh, rational numbers? What are the irrational numbers then? Irrational numbers are non, non recurring. First is and uh, first is non-terminating, then second is non-recurring. So, rational numbers, rational numbers which are denoted by Q or uh, Q is the form of rational numbers. Q is called Q is, Q is expressed as in the ratio form. If I express them in ratio form, they can be expressed in ratio form. P by Q, where P and Q, Q is equal to the rational numbers. These are the Rational numbers are something like that. Rational numbers are denoted by Q. The, the, word, no, the symbol used for defining rational numbers is Q. P equal to P by Q, where P and Q, where P and Q are, are integers. P and Q are integers prime to each other. They must be prime to each other. Only then this ratio will be formed. Integers prime to each other. They are prime to each other. And Q is not equal to zero. Because if Q is zero, then this value is not defined, this number is not defined. So rational numbers are of are capable of being expressed being expressed in a form of ratio P by Q where P and Q are integers and uh, negative or positive or maybe zero. P can be zero but Q cannot be zero. That is given by for rational numbers. Now if I define them, okay, in terms of decimal forms, so if I take an example, for example, if it is 1.5, right, so this is terminating decimal form. This is 0 0.2 only. It's terminated, I mean decimal is not further expressed to or further expand. This decimal is terminating form. The rational, this is a rational number. Similarly, if I take 1.7, 1.7, which is equivalent to 0 0.21, right? 7 for the 28, 2, 7 to the 40, 6, 7, 8 to 56, right? And then 4, 7, 5 to 35, and 57, 4, 7 to 49. And again, 1 is the remainder. Okay, so the same number will repeat. This number will be repeated. This is non terminating but recurring. So this is non terminating but recurring. Non terminating decimal. Non terminating but recurring. Recurring means repeating. Recurring or repeating. Or 
repeating. That's recurring or repeating. This number is also a rational number. And what are the irrational numbers? Now, irrational numbers are, let me define them here. What are the irrational numbers? Now, irrational numbers are non terminating if they are expressed in term, terms of decimals, but they are non recurring as well. Okay, so non repeating or non terminating, so irrational numbers are. What are the irrational numbers? Irrational numbers are divided into two parts. First is they are non terminating. Non terminating. Right? And the second is they are non recurring as well. Non recurring. Non terminating as well as non recurring. What is non terminating and non recurring? So, for example, if I take Give uh, a square root two. The square root of all the prime numbers, mostly the prime numbers, if this is first even prime number. So what is the square root of this? This is equal to 0 0.4142135. Right. And again, this number is not and it's not terminated. This is uh, irrational numbers. So irrational numbers are mostly non-terminating. For example, square root three. Let's go to 0 0.713, right? 0, 050, 712, sorry, 712, 050, right? 807, etc. I mean, they are not terminating. Non terminating. 712.712, 713, maybe or 0, 0, 050, 0, 0, 0, right? So this is how this is non-terminating, but non-recurring as well. Non-terminating as well as non-recurring, non uh, not repeating. Non-repeating means no number is being repeated after a certain interval. I mean, we cannot say that next number will be 414, similar number will be repeated. This is non-recurring as well as non-terminating. These are the irrational numbers, mostly square root of the prime numbers, are the irrational numbers. Irrational numbers are now the real numbers. So set of real numbers is consist. Uh, you are consisting of these two types of real numbers, rational numbers and irrational numbers. Now real numbers. What are the properties of real numbers? Let me define the property of real numbers. Then. So <coughs> binary operation. If I apply and binary operation is so property of real numbers, which are based on binary operation. Properties of real numbers. Properties of real numbers. What are the properties of real numbers? Let me define. Properties of real numbers. What are the properties of real numbers? Let me define them. What are the properties of real numbers? First property. Let me take. And these properties are based on binary operations. What are the binary operations in this case? Only addition and multiplication. With these properties are, uh, are uh, basically applied only for addition and or they are they are verified only on addition and multiplication. Right? They are applicable only for binary operation. Binary operation. What is the binary operation? This the properties are based on binary operations. That means addition and multiplication only. These two operations, addition and multiplication. Right? Addition and multiplication. These two binary operations, the property are based on based on only these two binary operations. Right? So, uh, properties which are based on binary operations, that the addition and multiplication, they are applicable only for addition, but not for division and subtraction. Right? These properties are based on multiplication of addition and subtraction. Right? Addition and <coughs> multiplication. First property that we take, what is commutative law? Commutative. Commutative law. I mean, if I take two numbers, these are real numbers, then this commutative law will be followed by those two real numbers. All right. If I take A and B, if A and B belongs to R, R means set of real numbers. Right. A and B belongs to R. That means A and B are real numbers. Then A plus B is equal to B plus A. 
This is commutative tool law for addition. This is for addition. And A into B equal to B into A. That means if I change the order of the addition and subtraction of these two numbers, then the value is same. So then we'll change. This is for multiplication. For multiplication. Multiplication. Now this is commutative law. Now it's commutative law. If I change the order of the numbers and they are added or multiplied, then the result is same. No change of this. Second is that we get associative law. Associative law. Second property is associative law. If I take A, B, A, B, and C belongs to R. Now three numbers here. A, B, and C. They belong to R. They are real numbers. Then A plus B plus C equal to A plus B plus C. If I add first two numbers, then the third one, or the last two numbers and the first one, the result will be same. This is for addition, as is for addition. And for multiplication, A into BC is equal to AB into C. For multiplication, as is law for multiplication and as is law for addition. Okay, so this is how as is law is also verified for addition and multiplication. Now, the third one, let me take distributive law. Distributive law. Now, in case of distributive law, if I take if if A again A B and C belong to our A B numbers A B C, then multiplication is distributed upon addition of these two numbers. So A dot B plus C is equal to A B plus A C. This is known as distributive distributive law. So here multiplication and addition. Multiplication is distributed upon addition of two numbers. So this is distributive law. Next, <coughs> let me take what is the identity elements for real numbers? So identity elements for addition and sub and multiplication. What are the identity elements? And then addition of universal. Then the properties, physical properties. One of the physical properties. First is uh, now fourth point, fourth law. Uh, elements, identity elements, right? So identity. What are the identity elements for addition and identity elements? Identity elements. Right. If I take zero and one belongs to this, zero and one which are belongs to R, which are real numbers. I mean, where zero is not equal to one. Obviously, 0 is not equal to 1, both are different numbers. So, A plus B, 0 equal to A, but equal to 0 plus A. That means, if I add 0 in a particular number or in a real number, then the value of that number doesn't change. Doesn't change 0 plus A or A plus 0. The 0 is known as additional identity or identity of identity element of addition. Zero is zero is known as additive identity. Additive identity. Additive identity. But what is one multiplicative identity? For example, a into one equal to one into a equal to a. Here if I multiply 1 with that number a or any number a where a is a real number then the value doesn't change so 1 into a or a into 1 is equal to a so here 1 is known as multiplicative identity <coughs> so if I add 0 to a number then the value of that number doesn't change similarly if I multiply by a number to the given real number then the value of that number doesn't change right so this is multiplicative identity so 1 is multiplicative identity Simply that one is multiplicative identity. Multiplicative identity. Right. So multiplicative identity and additive identity. Now next next properties are based on order They are only order properties or based on order. So order properties. Properties of real numbers based on order. 
order based properties order based properties for the properties of the arms order based property of the arms properties of the arms Order is property of the universe. What are the order is property of the universe? First property, let me take trichotomy law. This is known as trichotomy law. What is trichotomy law? That means if I take if A and B belongs to R, they are two real numbers, A and B, then only one of the following. Only one of the following, one of the following property hold, or holds. One of the following holds. One of the following will hold or holds. What is that? Either A equal to B. This is either A equal to B or A is greater than B or A is less than B, B is greater than A. So only one of the properties out of these properties will follow. Either A equal to B or A is greater than B or A is less than B. This is known as trichotomy law or three types of properties, three, three laws, three properties of all the numbers. All right. Next property, let me talk about. Next is what is transitive law? Proper, it is order based property. Next is transitive law. <coughs> Second is what is transitive law? Transitive law. You hear transitive means, let me take A, if A, B, and C belongs to R, there are three real numbers. Then, if A is greater than B, right, and B is greater than C, A is greater than B, B is greater than C. This implies that A is greater than C. Right? So this is known as transitive law. Based on the, that law is applied on three kinds of quantities. Right? Three quantities. This is known as transitive law. Next, what the other law? Next law is monotone addition. Law. What is monotone addition? Monotone addition. This is monotone addition law. What is monotone addition law? And the next is what is monotone multiplication law? So first is monotone addition law. That means if A, B, and C belongs to R. Right? If A is greater than B, monotone addition. That means the same relationship will hold if I add C in both these numbers. Let's see. So this is known as monotone addition law or addition property. So if A is greater than B, if I add and the number C in both the numbers, the same relationship will hold. So, monotone addition law. Next is what is monotone multiplication law? Monotone multiplication law. Monotone multiplication law. Monotone multiplication law. With that, if I take again. If A, B, right, belongs to R, and C also belongs to R, and C also belongs to R, but C is greater than zero, but C must be greater than zero. Only then, if A is greater than B, then if I multiply by C, this implies that A into C. Is it still greater than B into C? B into C. That means this property will hold if A is greater than B, 
and if I take C as positive number, then the same relationship will hold if I multiply by C the two numbers separately. That means A into C is still greater than B into C. But only if C is greater than 0 or C is positive. If C is negative, then this relationship will reverse. I mean, A, A C will be less than B C if it is greater than B. This is known as monotone multiplication law. Monotone multiplication law. <coughs> Alright, so here are the properties of real numbers. Now, next step, now let me talk about how to represent uh, geometrically the real numbers. How geometrically we represent the real numbers on a number line. Alright, so number nine. How to represent real numbers and then what is the absolute value of a real number that is 100 points. First, let me take how to represent geometrically. Okay, so geometrical representation, geometrical representation of a real number. Of a real number. Geometrical representation of real number or of real numbers of your real number or real numbers. If I take a number line and this is suppose 0 and let me take this is 1, again this is minus 1, 2, the same distance this is minus 2. Right. So, how the rational numbers and irrational numbers are represented on the number line? So, if I take this is a 1, 2, all the are rational numbers. If I take the square root 2, right, so square root 2 means 1.414, 1. 1.3, uh, yeah, 1.414, so 1.414, this is 5, so near about this, let me take this, is, this is that number, this is square root 2, which is equal to 1.414 and 2135, this is the value of 100 root 2. So this value will lie just okay in between or just before between the middle middle point of 1 and 2. So between the 1.415 or 1.5 or 1.5 1.414. Similarly 1.3 for uh, uh, square root 3. What is square root 3? 1.7 713 right 1 1 1.7 uh, 132 or 1.73 right so 1.732, root 3 is 1.732, like 0, 5, 0, and this is 807, 807. This value will lie this is 0.56.7. If I take this is 0.7 value, this value will be this for root 3. So how the geometrically we represent real numbers on the number line, this is how we, we can represent real numbers on the number line. The next point is how what is the absolute value of a real number? So absolute value of a real number. Next point. How to find out absolute value of a real number? Absolute value of a real number. Absolute value of a real number. What is the absolute value of a real number? So if I take A belongs to R of A is a real number. And the absolute value of A is represented like this, this is the modulus of A, or this is this will be equal to plus A if A is greater than 0, greater or equal to 0, right? And equal to minus A if A is less than 0. Here it is less than 0, then it will be negative value. So, the absolute value of A is represented like these two values, right? A positive. If a is greater than or equal to 0, so to minus a, if a is less than 0. So this is good. I've taken what are the real numbers and what numbers or quantities are described in or are being, being discussed in uh, calculus, differential calculus, or integral calculus. Today I'm taking differential calculus, or uh, this is a part of applied mathematics, right? So for today, this is sufficient. Now, next, I'll take, I'll talk about what the quantities What quantities? constants and variables, the quantities are there. All those quantities are next, uh, or, uh, I'll discuss about them in the second lecture. In third lecture, what are the functions, type of functions, kinds of functions, I mean, functions are very important. Right? Because functions are being discussed in different calculus or in different calculus. So functions, type of functions, we will discuss about. And then what are the limits, 
and then a continuity. How which functions are continuous functions, not continuous functions, or discontinuous functions, right? Continuity limits and continuity, and then type uh, what is the basic fundamental law differentiation for today. This is sufficient. Okay, then see you <coughs> next time.